Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, we'll go through our current uh, team status here first, uh, just to kind of bring you up to date. Offense line came through the game uh, healthy, uh, so we'll have everyone available um, for this weekend. Uh, the tight end position, uh, Dalton Morgan did not dress last week. Uh, he was in the hospital. Uh, he's currently battling uh, some type of flu bug. Um, so I don't know what his availability will be uh, this this week or into the weekend. Uh, fullback position uh, is set. Um, receiving core, uh, we're good there. Uh, Sean Mitchell, we did uh, activate Sean, and uh, he got the, uh, involved in the game uh, this past week. So uh, you expect to see him more in our game plans uh, in the future. Uh, Mikael McCall uh, had a low ankle sprain. Currently, it's uh, sore. We really haven't uh, pushed him too hard to this point to see um, where he's at physically. So that'll be a day-by-day -day, uh, evaluation to see what his availability will be. So um, <clears throat> quarterback position came through healthy there. Uh, defensive line, um, healthy at the defensive line, outside linebacker position, inside linebacker. Uh, Victor Burnett uh, looks like it's a uh, ACL injury that uh, he sustained in the game on Saturday. So uh, right now that's not looking good for him uh, playing the rest of the season. So uh, that was uh, <clears throat> some bad news with their uh, secondary uh, defensive back position came through free uh, of injuries. And then in the second or in the special teams, uh, we will be going with Austin Johnson as our kicker, and uh, everything else will, will fall in place. Uh, scheduled for this week, uh, everything will be uh, normal uh, as far as the times, practice times will be in Suzuki Stadium uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and then Friday. Our travel plans uh, we will bus. Bloomington Friday morning. We'll have an early afternoon practice over at Hancock Stadium and, uh, and then actually Saturday game day and return immediately after the game. Um, looking at the Missouri Valley Conference, uh, it, it's uh, probably as competitive the league as I've uh, seen. It's uh, from top to bottom. I think it's, uh, it's going to be interesting each week as things develop and uh, had a disappointing weekend, but at the same time, uh, I really do feel that uh, anything is possible here on a week-by-week -week basis. So uh, yeah, I think it's going to get very interesting uh, with each week that's played. Uh, getting ready for Illinois State. Uh, good football team, currently 5-0. and Ranked last week number 12. I don't know if the rankings came out yet today, but I'm sure that's uh, probably improved. Uh, some very impressive wins. Uh, especially over Eastern Michigan um, at the Division 1A level. Um, they had a shootout with uh, Eastern Illinois that uh, I'm currently watching. Um, it might take a couple days to get through all the plays uh, with that one. Um, that was a very interesting game. Uh, and then last week, uh, their battle with uh, the University of South Dakota, uh, which was another uh, fun watching these games. Very competitive. Uh, you see uh, players make plays, and uh, you know, Illinois State, there's a reason why they're 5-0, and oh, they're pretty good, and uh, they've been tested, and they've passed some tests, so uh, they're feeling pretty confident in their game, and they should be. Uh, you look at the numbers, uh, offensively, uh, very impressive, uh, scoring close to 40 points per game, um, and then putting up about 455 yards of offense per game, so those are extremely impressive numbers. And then defensively, I think the most impressive number on the defensive side uh, is they're giving up only 300 yards of offense per game. And they've been involved in a couple shootouts. So I, I think you can see that they have some uh, definitely strength on both sides. Uh, offensively, um, some of their key players, uh, Matt Brown, I think has his game at uh, the highest level that I've seen him play. Uh, he's a playmaker. He, he just goes out and, and makes things happen. His confidence is very high. Uh, he, he can 
make throws that I haven't seen many people make. So he's a, a, a quarterback right now that I think has the hot hand and is performing very well. Uh, he has a good complement of athletes to support him. Uh, their running back that they uh, had transfer in uh, done, uh, he's good. He's averaging about 106 yards, uh, a little more of a power type back, but he's uh, he, he definitely get the yards for them. And they got a number of receivers led by Tyrone Walker, who right now has uh, 31 receptions on the course of the, the season, and uh, he's kind of the favorite target, but there's, I think he's comfortable going to about any one of uh, four receivers at any point in time. Uh, defensively, uh, they're solid. Um, you look at their defensive line, some very athletic defensive ends in Underwood and in Palmer. Uh, their linebacker call, Mike Zimmer, is the, the leader of the linebacker uh, group, and Frierson, number three, very active. You'll see him uh, all over the field. And then in the secondary, uh, they're led by number seven, Ben Erickson, who uh, currently has three interceptions uh, to his total. Um, again, a talented defense um, that will definitely put some stress on your offensive matchups. And then with the special teams, I think there too, uh, they found uh, some stability. Uh, at the kicking position, uh, Ossieker is four for five on his field goals, and uh, I think he has missed uh, two PATs, 24 and 26 on the PATs, but uh, he's doing a good job with the, the field goal kicking. And then Patrick Wright is their punter, who's averaging uh, over 41 yards per punt. So uh, that's one thing I think, too, in the league, you're seeing some uh, quality punters, uh, a lot of punters right now are averaging uh, in that 40 plus range with their kicks. So that's what we're getting ready for. Uh, questions? Um, there are certain uh, plays where you need a power back. If, if McCall can't go, how would you handle that? Well, uh, Ray Agnew also takes reps. Um, you know, that's the one thing that uh, he's been playing our fullback position. Uh, we just haven't used him just because we haven't had the need to use him in the past with, uh, with Sharif and Jewel Hampton and with Mikael. But, uh, you know, Ray has practiced, been taking some reps at the tailback uh, position just in case, uh, you know, that need would ever arise. Um, but at the same time, you do have it's not the power back situation, but uh, Steven Struther has played a lot of football for us. Uh, Local has played a lot of football for us. Uh, another back that's available for us is uh, Steven McKinney. Uh, in fact, he came here as a running back, and uh, you know, so that kind of complements the depth. But uh, but with Mikael, if he's not available, that does definitely hurt the uh, the North South game. Coach, how do you get out of the offensive funk you guys are kind of in right now? Make plays. Uh, bottom line, you just got to make some plays here and there. It's, uh, it's a momentum thing. I, I do think once uh, you start having success, uh, good things can happen. But right now, we got to make plays. And uh, you know, we struggled in doing that. And, uh, and as long as we continue to struggle, it's, uh, you know, it's frustrating. And it's frustrating for the entire team. And, and, uh, coaches it makes calling the game very difficult but uh, at the same time you just got to keep swinging away it's an expression that we're using you know keep playing keep playing um, something's going to pop and, and, um, and then from there hopefully we get her going how was how was um, Indiana State able to get a rush on you with three guys it, is it just it was a blocking schemes or not correct or what they were, they were just that good well, it's uh, like any situation. You, you got five protecting, but you do got some one-on-one -on -one matchups. Uh, what gave us some issues was on the perimeter uh, with their tackle matchups, uh, especially on Obaseki, uh, gave us some difficulties. And then as the game progressed, we had to switch up some blocking schemes to try to get some a little more help um, to uh, the perimeter on the protection. Uh, and there's several different ways you can do that by also doing that too. You're, you're, you might be committing an extra guy uh, to the protection, which again is a 
something that you would like to avoid if possible. But uh, you know they did a good job getting pressure on us, and, and uh, we didn't have the best of days up front, and, and uh, that's where we got to get better. Coach, you're, you're going to play a lot of good defensive fronts in this league. What, what makes Illinois State unique or, or different than the other ones that you've seen already? Well, I think, like you said, they're they're all good. They got some good athletes, and, and uh, it's uh, I don't think it anything that separates them from anybody. I just think they have some very good talent. Uh, uh, guys that I mentioned, uh, Harris and Palmer and Underwood, uh, they're very talented and they, they run along around well. Um, you know, things that we got to be able to do, uh, we got to be able to help our offensive line too. So, uh, you know, doing some things with some misdirection, um, you know, just getting things moving around in the backfield, some quicker throws, uh, you know, that all has to be a part of uh, you know, trying to help the offensive line perform well too. Will you be but with the with the line, will you be focusing more, you know, on matchups this week specifically, or shuffling guys around? You know, to... Well, right now, uh, you don't want to do too much shuffling of personnel. Um, you know, naturally, we're going to look: are we as strong at every position as we can be? And uh, if, if there's a matchup that might be uh, a little concern, you know, we'll address that right away. I'm not going to go into the specifics of that, but. Uh, you know, we're not going to be flip-flopping every other play and, and uh, you know, dipping our hat that way. So uh, we got to just uh, get things solidified up front and feel good about the guys that are up there doing the work for us. What does uh, Corey Faulkner need to do to get better? Well, it, you know, confidence, uh, you know, that's a big thing with Corey. And, and uh, with confidence, uh, you know, everyone else has to pick up the level of play too. And that was the message uh, to the team, to the offense uh, yesterday. Uh, it's not where we're asking them to all of a sudden become great. We're just, we need to get better. And it's just, uh, even just a small improvement level is going to help us. So if everyone can pick up their level of play, uh, you know, that's going to make the overall effort uh, that much easier to obtain. So uh, there's a frustration right now that does exist. It's, it's something that uh, uh, when you just struggle to move the football like we did the past two weeks, uh, uh, you start losing confidence. And, and uh, you know, we got to find things that we're confident in doing. And, and uh, once we find those, you know, Corey's game is going to get better. Our offensive line's game going to get better. You know, our running game is going to get stronger. You know, hopefully we can get our receivers involved um, with how we want to play the game. So um, it, it's really one of those things, once you get the momentum going, hopefully you can sustain that. They're averaging you know, close to 40 points a game and are obviously pretty balanced on offense have, and have a lot of playmakers. You know, what, what's the biggest challenge in facing an offense like that? Well, you know, on our defense, it's going to uh, basically be to, you know, we got to find a way to slow them down. And, uh, one of the best ways you can slow them down is offensively. You got to stay on the field. Uh, if we have our defense out on the field uh, an extended period of time, uh, that's going to wear us down. And, and uh, you know, time of possession uh, could be this could be a game where time of possession is very key. And, and uh, you know, we're capable of doing things offensively. Now it's been frustrating the last two weeks, but uh, you know, we can move the football. We can execute a game plan. We just got to go out and do it. And, and uh, you know, that's the message that we got to get across to the team and the confidence that we got to build this week. You mentioned last week about, you know, having a more aggressive game plan. Do you, do you feel like you guys were aggressive enough on Saturday? Well, I think if you look at our first quarter, um, you know, that's what we were looking to try to do. Uh, we came out and, and really executed a, an efficient offensive game plan. We came out attacked. And then the second quarter, uh, for whatever reason, um, we just didn't didn't have it. You, you get a bad series, and then uh, they ended up they had a drive that was like 10 plays, 74 yards, consumed a lot of time. And then we come out with another three and out, and then all of a sudden you're looking at the end of the half, and we had a rough in the kick. I mean, it was just the second quarter. We just didn't get out on the field like we would have liked to offensively. And then the third quarter was the, the third quarter of three and outs on both sides. And, um, you know, so now all of a sudden you're looking at the fourth quarter and you haven't done much offensively. So, um, you know, 
sometimes the games present them themselves like that. The last two weeks, the games that we were in, there were defensive battles. Um, it, it was, you know, neither offense was doing what they wanted to do or were capable of, of doing. And it uh, wasn't until uh, one side made the mistake and, and uh, you know, with the penalty, with the interception uh, on our end, you know, then, then all of a sudden it broke and it broke against us. So, um, Sometimes there's games where you're in a defensive battle and that how it shapes up. And there's other times where you are in a shootout and there's no explanation why you can't stop a team defensively, but both offenses are going up and down the field. So that's the game of football. Does Illinois say are they more of a finesse team or are, they, are you expecting a physical game? Well, they can do both. Uh, you know, their strength is definitely their passing game uh, with Brown. Uh, you know, they got good receivers. Uh, They'll take their shots deep on you, but uh, they've been able to really have a consistent run game with it. And, and uh, so, I, what they like to do is, you know, they want to dictate the tempo, they want to dictate the pace um, as far as how the game's going to develop. Now, the University of South Dakota did a very good job of, uh, you know, just fighting back, keeping it close, and they had a pretty good shot at. Uh, getting a win out of that battle last week so um, you know there's some things there that we see that you know are encouraging too that might fit us well also they have some new faces on the offensive line Dale what, what do they really do well right now well there uh, a couple are our transfers coming in and, and uh, uh, you know they're pretty solid up front uh, they're a physical offensive line uh, they have some decent size uh, Actually, there's a continuity that's developing there, I think, with each game that they play. They're getting more and more confident. Um, you know, the thing that Matt Brown does a very good job of doing, um, he really buys a lot of time uh, you know, back in the pocket. He's very patient, and uh, when there is some pressure, he's very good at eluding that pressure and just kind of, you know, spending time in the background, moving backfield, moving around. So, um, you know, he's a good complement to that old line to, to help them develop. You mentioned that the transfers, they have 18 FPS transfers this year. You know, what kind of impact does that make on, on their team? That's a question for Coach Back. Okay. How important is it for you to sustain drives and, and try to get into a rhythm where you can call some things? And, That's and football. Keep... It's, 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 if we don't, we're in trouble. You know, we, we got to be able to move the ball offensively and we got to be able to keep our defense off the field and we got to be able to uh, exchange field position. It's not always about scoring and, and um, you look at last Saturday night, third quarter, first half of the third quarter, the field position was in our favor. Uh, you know, we had some great field position. We were setting ourselves up for, uh, you know, success eventually, um, but then Unfortunately, the one punt, which was a 66-yard punt that ended up putting us back inside our own 30, then that kind of reversed the field position, and, and then they got the upper hand, and then after that, they were set up for success. So um, so it's not always about putting points on the board. Uh, when you're in certain games, it's about creating that, sustaining that field position, and, and um, you know, that's something you got to always be aware of. They have eight interceptions on the season. You know how much of that will affect your game plan and inability to take shots down the field? Well, uh, again, you got to look at the games that they were in, and um, you know, in the Eastern Illinois game, I think Eastern Illinois ran 110 plays in that game. So, uh, you know, it's uh, they've had a lot of balls in, in the air. I think the stat that you do look at is. Uh, you know, the interceptions per attempts, uh, just how many times the ball's been put in the air. But they are athletic. They, they can make plays. Uh, you know, they had a pick six against South Dakota. Uh, they had another interception where they, you know, set up another score. So uh, defensively, uh, they're a good complement to their offense. They'll give them field position. They'll set them up. And, uh, you know, I think that's the thing that's most impressive is that they, they, they really do complement the offense well. You said Saturday that the defense kind of got worn out throughout the game. How do you address that this week? Well, it's a, the 
it's it's as uh, it's much as a uh, mental thing as it is a physical thing, and and uh, we can't let frustration uh, enter in. Uh, you know, so we got a number one put last week behind us um, and move on, and then number two, you just gotta keep playing your position, keep playing, doing your job. Um, you know, believe in the fact that good things will happen. And, got to be ready for those opportunities that come there. Uh, the one expression we always talk about, what's the most important play in football? You know, the answer is the next play. And, uh, you know, you just have to have that mentality every single snap. South Dakota, uh, South Dakota had some success scoring on Illinois State. Um, can you take anything from watching the film of that and implement it into our game plan? Well, it's never not that you're going to implement it into your game plan, uh, but it does show you that there are uh, areas that you can attack. There are um, situations you can put yourself in to give yourself a chance for success. So uh, big plays were extremely important for uh, USD. They, they had some very big plays to get some scores. So um, the, you know that tells you there that maybe you got to take a few more shots. You know, do you feel like you guys have done a, a good enough job making in-game adjustments the past couple games? Well, it depends on, you know, I guess, uh, you know, which game. You said last couple games, uh, you know, we won one game and we lost the other. So I think we did a good job in the game we won and probably didn't do a good enough job in the game we lost. Uh, um, you know, so, you know, it's, uh, again, you always go back, you always second guess yourself. I mean, that's uh, sometimes when you make a game adjustment, uh, it's the worst decision you can make because you might have done something that completely takes you out of position. You should have stayed with what you were doing. And then there's other times you're kicking yourself because you didn't change. Because, you know, it's just one of those situations that, hey, that's that's the game of football. You know, you know the, the time that we missed a field goal, I'm kicking myself, it's fourth and two. We should have went for it. I mean, it's just one of those things that should have been a little more aggressive. Um, Know, with their offense early on, you know, but I wasn't, you know, so you know, those are always things that you think about afterwards, and it's part of the game. Um, I just read an article where uh, it said that Dunn and uh, Kerry and Erickson and Tevin Allen were all hurt. Do you have, do you take that into account when you make a, a any kind of a game plan, or it just doesn't matter? No, you're aware. I saw that tweet too from there. There, did you see that off of a tweet? So, but I mean, that's you get reports, and so and you know we send guys in on Sunday to get X-rays all the time and get MRIs all the time. That's just standard protocol. So uh, you got to expect every team you play to be at full strength. And, what, and, what is it that South Dakota did on offense to move the ball against uh, Illinois State? It's executed. They made plays. Same they got game. an open space. Uh, they made people miss. Uh, wasn't anything fancy. It wasn't anything that uh, in South Coast or Illinois had some blown assignments uh, a couple times. It's just a receiver running wide open down the middle of the field. Well, that's a blown assignment uh, on defense. So uh, Illinois State made a mistake and they paid for it. Dale, do you think do you think the winner of the conference will go eight now? I, you know, as it looks right now, I think it'd be very difficult to go eight zero in this team if you or in this league if you do. Um, you know, you're a pretty good football team, so it looks good for the playoffs for that team.